Since 2009, Southeastern Automotive Group has been buying for and selling to most of the franchise dealerships in the area. What if you were able to bypass the big dealerships with the big markups? Buy direct from the supplier. Save thousands of dollars on your next vehicle purchase. Have a trade-in? No problem. With the used vehicles in such high demand, Southeastern Automotive Group has dealers ready to buy your trade. If Southeastern Automotive Group doesn't have the perfect vehicle for you, using their vehicle locator program, they will have it shipped in without any hassle or haggling you hate. With over hundreds of thousands of cars available at auctions across the nation, your next vehicle purchase is just a click away. ESP Specialist in Fabrication is located at 169 Little Phoebe Church Road in Folkestone, in Georgia. President Mark Pickering and his employees utilize the latest technology with a skilled workforce to supply customers with the best custom fabrication possible. Serving clients at home and abroad makes ESP a premier employer in Charlton County. For all your specialty and fabrication needs, contact ESP at 912-496-2583 today. They're also on Facebook at ESP Specialist Fabrication. ESP is a proud sponsor of Charlton Sportsnet. Okefenokee Rural Electric Membership Corporation has been providing quality electric service at a competitive price to residential, commercial, and industrial customers in southeast Georgia and northeast Florida since 1939. For tips and advice on how to save electricity and stretch your energy dollars, call 1-800-262-5131 and speak to your marketing representative. We are a cooperative owned by those we serve. Good evening and welcome back to the Coach Mac Show Playoff Edition. I'm Adam Bell for Charlton Sportsnet along with head coach Rich McCorder. Coach, we had uh, Lanier County this past Friday night getting ready for the playoffs this coming Friday. They uh, had a great game Friday night. Um, I thought uh, Saquon Clark and Tony Cobb had a huge night, both those guys. We, had a, we were able to do a lot of things on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, we had three players catch three passes and we had two more catch two more passes and that's kind of what we were uh, aiming to do uh, you know Saquon Clark three catches 78 yards and uh, the Vegas Austin three catches 44 yards and a touchdown Brentley Sloan added another touchdown with 31 yards uh, uh, receiving and Tony Cobb really uh, he he carried most of the load in the running game but uh, we had two runners also get over 100 yards rushing. Tony Cobb, 11 carries for 158 yards and two touchdowns. And then Raekwon Anderson had five carries for 103 yards and a touchdown. And then Michael Elliott also scored another touchdown with five carries for uh, uh, 50, 52 yards. And they had some great averages. Uh, per rush, you had uh, Tony, Tony Cobb had 14.4 yards. Uh, Raekwon had 20 yards a carry average and then Michael Elliott had 10 yards a carry average uh, so that was really good I think we've rushed for uh, 339 yards and five touchdowns and we threw for uh, 177 yards and and two touchdowns there so offensively we were able to do a lot of things I felt like our offensive line uh, did, did some good things um, and then uh, you know, at special teams, I think everything was okay. The thing that concerns me probably coming out of the game was uh, that we are still having way too many penalties. We had 14 penalties for 130 yards. Twice on, I think, third down and short, we jumped off sides on defense. Just, just you know, actually just, just really awful. Uh, uh, not real disciplined and... and not focused like you need to be, still making way too many penalties. We've been penalized all year long in some of the worst situations uh, uh, that you could be penalized in. And, of course, that's something that we need to uh, – we need not to have happen this yeah. Friday if we're going to be successful moving on. Uh, defensive side of the ball, you know, we gave up uh, – we gave up uh, rushing. We gave up 43 yards on uh, 30 attempts. That's a 1.4-yard average. And a touchdown passing, we gave up. You know, in the secondary, I felt like all year we have not been real good in the secondary. In the secondary, we gave up 190 yards and a touchdown, and uh, not really, just not playing in the secondary like we need to. Um, our tackle leaders was uh, Trayvon and uh, Trayvon Green. Trayvon Green was six and a half. Travis Ray with six, and then Daniel Mack with five and a half. 
Uh, Daniel Mack also had a sack along with uh, two sacks with Bernard Jordan having a sack. And then uh, interceptions, uh, Saquon Clark had three. three. Had yeah, game. had a big, big game uh, picking them off. But again, we're not playing real well in the secondary. We need to do better in the secondary. And uh, hopefully that would be a point of emphasis this week as look like it was last week. Hopefully we can get better there. All right, Coach. Yeah, I've got some highlights here. Sure. We're going to hit on some of those that, that you just talked about sure. with the uh, with the stats and all. And I believe the only one I had a question on you about as far as the personnel was the second one. It was hard for me to see his number. Okay. But the uh, first one is uh, after a big run by Michael to get us down there, the short the short one going in for the touchdown. Yeah, this week uh, the film was hard to see because of the uh, – low angles that yes. we had uh, it's not really what you want you'd like to have those high angles uh, that was uh, Michael Elliott carrying the ball in on inside run he kind of felt like he had to jump over somebody I think he landed on his head there but uh, it's you know but I think it's, it might be his first touchdown of the year so I know he's excited to finally get one in he's had a lot of good carries but uh, you know I think it's uh, uh, you know, I think you know he's had a couple other touchdowns, but I know he's really trying to get in there and mm -hmm. and uh, went over the top. Now this is no second one. This is the one I had a question. Like you said, the low angle, and I was lower than your crew was. I was. And we were down in the bleachers for the uh, webcast Friday night. This is the second one. It's the hand. I believe that's a Quan coming across, but I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, no, that's the Vegas Austin. The Vegas, the Vegas Austin. Uh, there's some really good blocking going on by Brantley Sloan and and uh, Saquon Clark blocking on the edge down here on this uh, on this. It's a jet sweep, but actually technically it's a pass because we toss the ball up for him. So technically it's a it's a pass when you put it in the stats. And he really fought in to get on the corner of that uh, pylon, and and it was a great effort by uh, the Vegas Austin. Number three is the uh, incredible fingertip catch in the corner of the end zone by uh, Brantley for another score for the Tribe. Can you see that all right? Yeah, I, I can see it just fine. I, I haven't seen it from this angle. Uh, we saw it. Our camera, I think, was on the other side for some reason. Plus, we're on the field, and we couldn't hardly really see it. When this happened, uh, when this happened, we didn't know it was a touchdown because we couldn't see the official raise his hands. And we heard absolutely no reaction from the crowd. Yeah. So I, I, I had no, we had no idea. We're looking at each other, is it a touchdown? Do we score? Because usually the crowd will get excited yeah. because they can see it a little bit better. But I think that by then, you know, the crowd was more interested in visiting with one another than watching a football game. So they didn't, uh, <laughs> uh, we couldn't tell by the crowd. We couldn't tell. I couldn't see the official through everybody. And uh, yeah. finally, you know, saw a few players jump up and was excited, so I figured it must have been a touchdown. And, and it was a great throw, a great throw. Yeah. You can see from this angle uh, by uh, Raekwon Anderson, and, and it's a great catch, uh, great catch by Brantley Sloan. I'll tell you, Brantley just right has on some, the finger. Yeah, Brantley really has some incredible hands, uh, a yeah. great receiver, and uh, runs great routes. And right here, this is a it's a it's designed to be a rollout. It's a combination route with uh, the underneath guy. I think is deeper than he should be, but but again, it works out real good for us. Is uh um, real quick is Brantley? Um, I know obviously with his grades and all, he has nothing to worry about going to the next level. Is he get any looks? From you school? know, he he has people that are looking at him. Yeah. Uh, like a lot of kids right now are getting looked at. Um, right. You know, your you know, your blue chip three and. Uh, five and four stars, of course, they're all getting right. locked in, but then you got most of your players who aren't uh, four and five stars. Uh, he's getting looked at. He's got, you know, perfect 4.0 GPA. Yeah. Um, I think he's going to have near uh, over 30, 30 credit hours uh, of college classes at the end of this year, and I think he has a 4.0 in that. So academically, he's, he's, he's incredible. Sure. Yeah. So he'll be able to go to any college he wants academically. Now, there are some people that call and ask about him, check his height and weight and that sort of thing. So hopefully uh, if that's the route he wants to go, and again, he's got choices because of his academics. Uh, he, you know, it's not something he has to do uh, with, his, with his academics and uh, the kind of work, his work ethic in a classroom. He can go to college without having to rely on that football money.
And, that, and that's something you stress all the time too. I mean, that's a prime example of how the academics can even open up more doors. A lot of kids try to rely on the athletic side a little too much. Well, you know, the if they do, side. if they do, they're getting their information from someone else. Right. Because I'm, I tell them. I actually, I gave them a sheet about uh, talking about some, you know, priorities and the process and things like that. Things I talk about. You know, every day I'll spend time with our players talking about other things other than football. Right. And I think that's what football coaches should be doing. Uh, you know, it's easy out here. We spend a lot of time with football. We'll go into this uh, big classroom in here and watch film and watch, talk about football. But I, I take an opportunity every day to talk to our kids about anything and everything that has nothing to do with football. And uh, my kids know that, you know, I, I believe that, number one, first and foremost, your, your faith, however you choose to, uh, uh, choose to practice it, I think that's number one, your family. And then it's got to be your academics, no question. Uh, as much as I love the game of football and everything that football has done for me, none of it, absolutely none of it would have happened without, without the doing the job in the classroom. Right. And our kids have to understand, uh, if you want to get on the bad side of me in a hurry, mess around in the classroom. Uh, that's something that, that's really non-negotiable with me is you're, you're, you're not going to misbehave in a classroom for a teacher. Right. You're not going to not do your work. You're... Uh, and that's something that uh, it's just one of those things we ain't going to tolerate it from a, a student athlete because I tell them I should have the same belief system as your parents and that is we're not going to tolerate you underachieving in the classroom. We expect you to do your very best and, uh, and, and that's where it's all going to end up for anyway. Uh, you know, we've been really fortunate and blessed to have uh, a couple guys play some professional football. But to be honest with you, as far as the big money, we've had, we have had one guy, you know, make that generational cut money where football, you know, paved the way. But everybody else, I mean, you need a, you need high school diploma, you need a college, or you need some post-secondary training. Whether and that's a big thing with this group, I'm really preaching is there's some of you that may have a chance to play college football. You right. may have a chance to play college football, but all of you can do something. Whether it's military. You can get great, great training in military. I really push that with our, our players. Um, or there's trade schools. We have great trade school at, uh, up in Waycross. They can, yeah. they can make a great living now. They can make a good living uh, uh, doing something. Actually, they, a lot of those guys make much more than college graduates make. So, without the debt. Yeah, without the debt, exactly. <laughs> so that's the thing I've been pushing with these seniors. and. I talk to them all the time, and that's something that all of our players understand, that in this football program, academics is number one, you know, your character, your behavior, how you, uh, how you present yourself to other people is very, very important to this program. All right, Coach, let's move on to the uh, next, next highlight. This is, uh, this is that long run, I believe, by Raquan. Yeah, it is, and this is the one I actually thought they had him pinned up. Yeah this, is right, yeah, this is right in front of us, right on our sidelines, and, and uh, it was, he was pinned up now, and he just continued to give a great effort, and uh, he popped out, you know, he's a great athlete, just tremendous athlete, and, and he just kept his legs, very strong football player. Now, you look at Raekwon, he is built, built really well, and uh, this is just quarterback sweep right here, base blocking. Uh, I, I remember uh, our film was on the other side, and I know there was a couple of really key blocks, and I just can't remember who they were, but I know we had some really good blocks on the edge, and uh, and I, I think that uh, right there, you know, great athleticism, great effort by uh, by Raekwon Anderson to score that long run. I know when I was calling the play, I actually said they had, and then I had to stop. Yeah, because <laughs> he because he broke it. All right, this is the, uh, I believe this is the second TD that Michael Elliott had. Great blocking on the offensive line. Uh, we're having some really nice spurts of play from the offensive line. Again, need more consistency. Uh, but again, great effort with Mike. I, you, look at, you look at Mike, the way he ran the football, probably the first three or four games, mm -hmm. and the way he started running about midseason on, he's running with a lot more, uh, I won't say effort, but really, He's just hitting it downhill more. Yeah. And that's the thing I kept telling him is, is you're not a scat back. You're not the kind of back that can make one or two moves, make somebody miss, and then still go. You've just got to lower your shoulder and go. Take what's there. And, and there's nothing wrong with a five-yard run. And, and he really, 
he bought into that and he really changed his running style about halfway through the year and he's uh, he's much better for it and we're much better for for him doing that yeah he's just running straight ahead straight ahead all right taking the tackler on immediately all right this last one i'll go ahead and let that go one more time there's michael score one more time coach this last one is one of Saquon's three interceptions on the night. I believe this was number two. Well, right here, this is uh, yeah, it just, you know, it, Saquon was in great position uh, playing the guy and, and was able to, you know, get that pick. And the thing we always tell our, our defensive players, you get an interception, if you're already on the hashes or the numbers, stay on the hashes or numbers. Don't go to the middle of the field because that's where those big offensive linemen are, and you don't want to run into one of those guys. But if you can stay on the sideline, stay on the numbers, and that way the offensive line has to come to you and you got a lot more uh, room to run, uh, it works out. But this is really good, this great coverage by Saquon Clark, and he's had a really, uh, really nice year. I, I, you know, He's had four interceptions, three of which was last week. And uh, his offensive stats in receiving, uh, he leads our team with 32 catches, uh, 492 yards, and six touchdowns. Uh, so, you know, Saquon's had a good year. Uh, and that's what we, you know, we need a lot of guys having their best years in order for us to, to keep this thing going. And he's definitely doing his part. It's, it's going to be a huge game Friday night. We're going to take a quick break, Coach, if you yeah. don't mind. And when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll dive into Taylor County. Sure. Indian fans, did you know you're eligible to join the United First Federal Credit Union? We are your hometown financial institution offering services such as online banking, mobile deposit, free checking, and much more. And if you're in the market to purchase a vehicle, our auto loan rates start as low as 2.99 for those who qualify. We are conveniently located at 3773 2nd Street South in Folkestone, federally insured by NCUA and Equal Housing Lender. Folkestone Auto Supply, located at 4439 2nd Street North in Folkestone, Georgia, is owned and operated by the Dasher family. They have everything you need, bumper to bumper, for domestic and foreign car parts. Big truck operators, they have you covered as well with belts, seals, hoses, welding supplies, and so much more. They even have lawnmower parts, blades, and accessories. Stop by today and see the whole crew. Miss Joe, Pam, Little Sammy, Stephen, Dylan, and Big Sammy himself. It's Folkestone Auto Supply. Folkestone Pharmacy and Electronics located at 3885 Main Street in the heart of downtown Folkestone. They're Folkestone's original hometown pharmacy with 49 years serving the community. They have everything you need including household items, prescription medications, high-tech electronics, and much more. Their experienced and friendly staff in the pharmacy and electronics department are ready to serve you. Folks in Pharmacy and Electronics is a proud sponsor of Charlton Sports. Go Indians! Hey, right, welcome back to the Coach Mack Show. We're going to talk about Taylor County now. Coach, their, their record, I was looking at their record. We were talking about it before the game, I mean before the show. They're 5-5. Five and five. They have a, a loss against Turner, 30 to nothing, but then they turn around and beat Dooley later in the year, 47 to 19. I mean, how do you figure Taylor County out? Well, Taylor County, they come from that Region 4 single A mm -hmm. where you have Sly County, who I think is one of your top seeds, Marion County, who may be the region championship champions uh, up there, and, and uh, Hawkinsville and, and Dooley. 
that is a very, very tough region. That's um, they put as many people into the playoffs as we do. Yeah. And now that very first game of the season against uh, against Turner County, we've looked at that film and and they don't look anything like that now. I mean, they changed what they do offensively, defensively, and that that happens sometimes. A year ago, uh, Taylor County had a big senior class. Right. And, uh, of course, after you have a big senior class, it takes a little time to figure out who you are, what you can do, what you're good at. And that early season loss to, uh, uh, to um, Turner County, I think, was really it was an important game for them because they realized, hey, we're going in the wrong direction, mm -hmm. offensively, defensively. Let's change some things. As soon as they did, they started rolling. They started having big games. And you look at some of the a couple of the top teams in the state, uh, whether it be uh, Sly County or Marion, they're in those football games. They're yeah. playing them well. I mean, you look at us versus Irwin and Clinch. Uh, Irwin and Clinch, both of them just they really just kicked our tails. But then whenever they played Sly, you know, the game was very very competitive for a while, and then kind of took off on them. They lost 41 to seven. But then, you know, Dooley, Dooley has probably the best offensive football player in the state, Lawson. He's, he's and uh, he's an incredible football player. And, and they go and play Dooley and beat Dooley 47 to 19. And, and then next week they lose to Marion. So it's back and forth, back and forth <laughs> uh, with them. But they're a good football team. Uh, defensively, they're a 3-3 three, three stack. But that's the base look, which you never see the base look, but you know that's their first day defense. Uh, you know, the stack backers are always playing games, always blitzing, either coming inside, outside. We really worked hard today on the, on the field, on the lights, uh, preparing for all that. Big number 40, the Mike linebacker, who's outstanding. Uh, he does a great job. He, he'll bring pressure and so forth and uh, cover three type of looks. And, and, and so defensively, they play a – System that that I really like that, yeah. that that we play some ourselves, and uh, it's 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 very good versus what we do, and we're really going to have to. Uh, we spent a lot of time tonight. I know Coach Murray and Coach uh, Zach Wittenberg. They spent a lot of time with the offensive line and the running backs and quarterbacks tonight, just really making sure we had an understanding of what we're going to do when those uh, when those stack backers start doing different things coming up. Uh, you know, playing uh, you know bully techniques we call it, or coming inside on stunts. So uh, we had to work really hard on that. Offensively, their quarterback is a great athlete. They, they play with a couple of different backs, great athletes. They have a big 280-pound kid. They'll put it at lead back, and who will just knock our little linebackers, our linebackers, our inside linebackers. Uh, uh, you know, they're not very big, as you know. You've seen them in person, but. Uh, you know, you send a big 280-pound kid to their leading, it's going to be tough on them. The 280 kid is a running back? He's more of a lead back. He's, okay. a, he's, he's a lead a back. Lead. You know, he don't carry the ball much. But they have a lot of athleticism. I, I think they're, uh, they remind me somewhat of a much more, uh, you know, in the scheme, we recognize the scheme. It's a spread concept. They'll run some RPOs, run a lot, they'll run quarterback leads, and uh, just a lot of stuff with the back, a lot of the zone stuff. Uh, so it's stuff that we're familiar with, but, but their offensive line is huge. Their defensive line, those three guys on defensive line are really big. Yeah. Offensive line is huge. Of course, we're not, uh, you, you know, we're not real big on our defensive line, and uh, we've had some trouble with people stopping the run, of course. So. That's a big concern of ours. Is that we we've got to stop the run. We got to load up on the run, and uh, which leaves us vulnerable to the passing game. And so it's it's cool. We got our hands full, really. Does. And the thing I try to explain to our players and is that you know any any time you're in the playoffs, of course we've been in the playoffs every year but one here, uh, and for the last twenty what six seven years we've been in the playoffs. Uh, you know, just because it's a first-round game, just because you're a higher seed and you host, really doesn't mean anything other than if you get beat, you don't have to go far to go home, go to bed. But so our guys have got to understand this first-round matchup can be as tough as any round we play in. So you've got to be ready. We cannot come into this thing with anything less than our very best. If we do, 
it'll be a end of the season and it'll be night will be over and and we'll be uh, taking up equipment next Monday. That seating, uh, that seating number doesn't mean a thing. It doesn't really mean a thing. It's just where you fall, and it's a, it's a mathematical equation or formula, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Math people can straighten me out on that later, but to where it's kind of like you your non-region games count as much as region games, and and of course you may you know we uh, us losing to Applin County. If we wouldn't have lost that game, we'd probably be up a couple more spots. But, but you know, if we're up another spot or two, we may be playing Macon County right here. And I'm going to tell you something, Macon County is loaded. I mean, they got off to a rough start this year. But right now, Macon County is probably one of your top three or four Macon teams. They need to exactly. And they're playing on the road. Uh, and they could have very well been coming here. So I don't believe in, you know, when people ask, uh, how do you feel about your bracket? It don't matter how I feel about my bracket. Well, I asked that very question uh, before the show. <laughs> because you've got to play it. You've got to simply play it. Uh, in one of these state championship years up here on this wall, we spent a whole month on the road. We played four teams in a row, our last four games. All four of them were top seeds. All four of them were region champions. Mm -hmm. And all four of them were undefeated coming into our game. And they were hosting us. And we beat all four of them. That was so, the first year I streamed y'all. That's right. And uh, so, it, again, if you looked at that bracket, you'd say, that's an awful bracket. And on paper, yeah, it looked pretty ugly. It was hard to look at, mm -hmm. knowing that that would be our, our road to, to get to the Dome and get to the championship. But, again, you just got to play. You don't have to beat these other teams. You just got to beat the, one, the, that, one, in front the of one in front of you. And that's all you got to do. And, and don't even worry about next week because – Somebody else may take care of that, change that game for you anyway, uh, by them beating them. And so it's all about it's all about Taylor County Vikings. That's all it's about. Not the next one because there won't be a next one if we don't take care of Gotta this one. This one first. So uh, our, hopefully we can get our kids focused. Sometimes that's been a challenge this year to get these guys uh, <laughs> focused. And uh, you've seen us come out and play really up and down ourselves. And uh, and so hopefully we can come out and get off to a fast start and play well on both sides of the ball, play well in special teams, and hopefully uh, have a great night and move on to the next round. I heard that. The, um, I know Friday night, home crowd, playoff atmosphere here in the swamp. Hopefully something that's not, well, you say Taylor's got an awesome region, so they may be used to that kind of a hostile environment. But we need everybody here in the swamp. Right well, you know, we really do. and. and you know, it's you know, our neighbors over in Camden County. Uh, they've had a great year with, with the Wildcats, and they're going up to Atlanta. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, their people that ain't making the trip will come over and watch some <laughs> high school football. Just we're just trying to get a good crowd. We're trying to get some enthusiasm going because you know if the brackets hold up, which I expect they would, this will be it for home. Uh, we won't play here again this year. This will be the last time we play here. So if you're going to Come watch some Indian football. You need to get here this yeah, Friday. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so hopefully we have a great crowd, a lot of energy, a lot of noise when we're on defense, a lot of noise, especially when we're on defense and it's third down, third down, third down and, uh, and everything. So uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully it'll be a great night. We'll see what happens. All right. Coach, um, Coach Cruz, I, I still call him Coach Cruz, he said tickets go on sale. Wednesday, right? That sounds about right. I'm not sure when when they would go on sale, uh, uh, but yeah, that probably sounds right. Hopefully, it is. All the schools, it, I do know that. Yeah, it'll, it'll save you some time. Yeah, go over and get one from Coach Cruz, and and uh, you'll be able to walk right on in. And like I said, hopefully, we'll have a, a great gate, big crowd, a lot of. And, and you know, this is the very first time ever that Taylor County has been here. Right. for a football game. I was looking that up. We've never played Taylor County before. Uh, their coach said, I talked to him, and they said, yeah, none of, we've never been there. We, we're looking at a map now how to get there. And uh, so hopefully yeah, we, we have a, a great facility. You know, yeah. Dr. Larish and the school board has done an incredible job with our facilities around here, especially over the last uh, few years. And, and uh, it's, you know, I, I, I take a lot of pride in them. I know our players do too. And when other teams come, they look and they say, man, you guys have a great setup here, great stadium, great field house, and everything is, is just really nice. And hopefully we can get a big crowd in there. 
make a lot of noise. You know, I know our band's going to do their part. They always, oh, yeah, do, they and, always do. And uh, do a great job along with the cheerleaders. And hopefully we'll have a, uh, you know, it'd be a great experience for both sides. A great experience for, for Taylor and for us to have a big environment. Hopefully that's what we'll get. All right, Coach. Kickoff is still 7.30. 7.30. They're traveling. Yep, 7.30 Friday night. All right. Any, uh, nothing else going on. B team's no. done. B team is finished. Uh, it's, I think uh, everything's finished. I know uh, uh, basketball practice is starting to crank up for those not playing football. Uh, but hopefully we can keep this, uh, keep these kids playing some tackle football for a little bit longer. All the way through. And, uh, but we need a big crowd Friday night. We need a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, we need to hear it from you. We need to, uh, the kids really will feed off that. It makes a difference. It really does. Oh, yeah. And uh, hopefully we get it. All right, Coach, I appreciate it as usual. I appreciate you. We'll see you Friday night, 730 kickoff. Y'all get here early. Get here early. Let's fill the place up. Thank you for watching the Coach Mac Show. Gant AC Heat and Electric, located at 141 West Love Street in Folkestone, Georgia. They service all makes and models of air conditioning and heating units, electric and plumbing supplies, blown installation, appliance parts and service, as well as sheet metal products. Gant is a proud sponsor of the Charlton Sports Network, Go Indians, and the Band of Pride. Whistlin' Dixie Custom Framing and Unique Gifts and Cafe is located at 3742 Main Street in downtown Folkestone, Georgia. Lunches are served on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come join the fun food and fellowship whether you're a local, tourist, or a rural fan. We also serve Bluebell ice cream, coffees, and lattes. While dining, feel free to browse around as we also have custom freighting, train art, custom t-shirts, and unique gifts. Looking for a real lodging? You can also stay at the Chessy Caboose or the Peaks Cabin. Come see us. Charlton Electric now serving Charlton and surrounding counties. With over 20 years experience in both commercial and residential services, our electricians can meet your needs. We offer installation on whole house generators, service upgrades, mobile home services, troubleshooting, ceiling fan and light fixture installations, and much more. Call us today for an estimate at 912-276-7661. Custom Creations and Boutique is located at 246 First Street in Folkestone, right behind Lonnie Joe's Hair Salon. They offer a wide variety of items such as boutique clothing, shoes, jewelry, customized tees, home decor, gift and handmade items, and much more. Stop in and get all your custom game day apparel. They offer vinyl designs for shirts, signs, car decals, and more. There are many designs to choose from, or you can create your own. Custom Creations also does embroidered shirts and hats. They can be reached at 912-496-4987 or find them on Facebook.